Today, let's study God's Word with a title, The Truth, which we need to seek in the place where it can be found. When we see God's providence contained in all creation, we can see that there is always an appropriate place for everything. For example, if someone becomes ill, he or she has to go to the hospital. And if someone needs to learn something, he or she has to go to a school or an educational institute. In the same way, if we want to seek the truth and receive the forgiveness of sins and eternal life, where do we need to go? To seek the truth, many people in the world knock on the doors of many churches. They blindly knock on different doors, not knowing the characteristic of the place they need to find. However, Prophet Amos prophesied that people will not be able to find that place, even if they search for it all their lives. Through this expression written in the Bible, men will stagger from sea to sea. We can see that they must be so tired that they cannot even walk straight. However, the Bible prophesies that people will wander, searching for the Word of God, but they will not find it. When we see this prophecy, we can understand that Father and Mother grant us the wisdom we need through the Bible in order for us to seek the truth in the place where it can be found. Therefore, we should carefully examine the Bible and receive guidance from God on this Sabbath day to find out what is the truth that we must seek and where we need to go find it. I already shared a story with you as an example before. A man was strenuously searching for something in a big town square in the middle of the night. A passerby saw the man searching for something very diligently. So he asked him, What are you looking for in the middle of the night? The man responded to the passerby, saying, I'm looking for my key. The passerby then asked, Where did you lose the key? The man answered, I lost it in the front yard of my house. He lost the key in the front yard, but he came to the big town square to find it. What do you think? Is this rational behavior? In the same way, many people say that they are searching for God and the truth. However, they do not even know where God is. That is why they can neither find God nor meet God. Additionally, what can they not find? They cannot find the truth either. If you lost a key at your house, isn't it logical that you should look for the key at your house? It is truly foolish to come all the way out to the town square in order to search for the key. When we look around, many people are doing such foolish things like this. If we want to find the truth, shouldn't we go to the place where the truth is and look for it there? If we want to find God, shouldn't we go to the place where God is and look for God there? Therefore, we need to know how to find the place that God tells us to come to in the last age, and whom God tells us to find there. Today, let us search for the way, following all the prophecies given by God. Let us turn to Revelation chapter 22. In Revelation chapter 22, verse 17, it is written, The Spirit and the Bride say, Come, and let him who hears say, Come. Whoever is thirsty, let him come. And whoever wishes, let him take the free gift of the water of life. Seeing this prophecy of the Bible, we ought to think, where are the Spirit and the Bride? Where can we meet them? Quite a lot of members who have come into the truth say, 
I have attended several different churches to search for the truth. I have devoted my whole life to finding God in order to believe and serve Him correctly. After reading the verse in Revelation, we should ask ourselves, who are the Spirit and the Bride? Where can we find the Spirit and the Bride? What truth can we receive from the Spirit and the Bride? We need to know the answers to these questions so that we can go to the place where the Spirit and the Bride are to meet them. The Spirit and the Bride mentioned here are God, right? Then, where is God? Let us find out through the Bible where God dwells. Let's go to Psalm chapter 132. Psalm chapter 132, verse 13. It says, For the Lord has chosen Zion. He has desired it for His dwelling. This is my resting place forever and ever. Here I will sit enthroned for I have desired it. According to this verse, where is God's dwelling place? It is Zion. As long as we find Zion, we will be able to meet God who dwells there. God said, He has chosen Zion and desired it for His dwelling. Is God going to dwell in Zion for only a certain period of time? How long does the Bible say He will dwell there? God said that He would dwell there forever and ever. If God dwells in Zion forever, it means that we can meet God as long as we find Zion. There we can meet God, the Holy Spirit, and God the Mother, who is the Bride of God, the Holy Spirit, any time since the Spirit and Bride say, Come. The place where God dwells is Zion. God gives us His address through the Bible. The address where I dwell is Zion. If you come here, you can meet me anytime. Verse 14. This is my resting place forever and ever. Here I will sit enthroned, for I have desired it. I will bless her with abundant provisions. Her poor will I satisfy with food. I will clothe her priest with salvation and her saints will ever sing for joy. Here I'll make a horn grow for David and set up a lamp for my anointed one. I will clothe his enemies with shame, but the crown on his head will be resplendent. The foolish man in the story lost his key in the front yard of his house, but he went all the way to the town square to search for it in the middle of the night. A lot of people are making the same error as the foolish man did in the story. Where do we need to go if we want to meet God? We must go to Zion to meet God. Then, where is the place the Spirit and the Bride are telling us to come? We can understand right away that the place is Zion. Isn't it the teaching of God prophesied in the Bible that we can meet the Spirit and the Bride who give us the water of life when we go to Zion? Let us go to Micah chapter 4 and see the prophecy stating that God will teach us His law of life when we come to Zion in the last days. In Micah chapter 4 verse 1, it is written, in the last days, the mountain of the Lord's temple will be established as chief among the mountains. It will be raised above the hills, and peoples will stream to it. Many nations will come and say, Come, let us go up to the mountain of the Lord, to the house of the God of Jacob. He will teach us His ways. His ways mean His truth, so that we may walk in His paths, the law will go out from. Where will the law go out from? Zion. Generally, people think that the law came from Mount Sinai. The law that came from Mount Sinai is the law of Moses. However, the law that will come out from Zion will come out in the last days. 
Then, this law is not referring to the law of Moses that the Israelites received while living in the desert 3,500 years ago, but it is referring to the law of Christ. The law will go out from Zion, the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. If we are taught by God, we can learn the truth and receive the forgiveness of sins, salvation, and eternal life, allowing us to enter the kingdom of heaven, which is the goal of our faith, right? No matter how logically people will explain about salvation with eloquent speech and give us an explanation that seems accurate or plausible, if these people are not in Zion, can we say that their ideas and teachings are the truth? No, they are nothing but mere theories made by men. Their theories are teachings that do not contain God's promise. Through these theories, we would never be able to receive the forgiveness of sins, salvation, and eternal life. What is the place that we should go to find God and the truth? Also, where does the law of God come from? It is Zion. We must know this place. People who are not in Zion say, I found the truth. I serve God correctly. However, that is not true. According to the prophecy of the Bible, where does the forgiveness of sins come from? It comes from Zion. Where does eternal life come from? It comes from Zion. Where does salvation come from? All these blessings come from Zion. What is the reason all these blessings come from Zion? It's because God dwells in Zion. Eternal life also comes from Zion. Regarding this blessing, let's see. Psalm chapter 133, verse 1. Although you know this scripture very well. Let's read Psalm chapter 133, verse 1. How good and pleasant it is when brothers live together in unity. It is like precious oil poured on the head, running down on the beard, running down on Aaron's beard, down upon the collar of his robes. It is as if the dew of Hermon were falling on Mount Zion. For there the Lord bestows his blessing. What is the blessing that he bestows? Even life forevermore. Where does God bestow his blessing of eternal life? God said that He will bestow His blessing of eternal life in Zion. Therefore, unless we go to Zion, we cannot have eternal life. We cannot receive the forgiveness of sins. We cannot receive salvation either. Then, what is Zion, where God grants us all these promises? Let's see how to correctly recognize Zion through the Bible. Let's see Isaiah, chapter 33, verse 20. Look upon Zion, the city of our festivals. Prophetically, a place where the feasts of God are kept is called Zion. Look upon Zion, the city of our festivals. Your eyes will see Jerusalem, a peaceful abode, a tent that will not be moved, his stakes will never be pulled up, nor any of his ropes broken. There the Lord will be our Mighty One. God said that He will be with us in Zion, where His feasts are kept. Let's continue reading. It will be like a place of broad rivers and streams. No galley with oars will ride them. No mighty ship will sail them. For the Lord is our judge, the Lord is our lawgiver, the Lord is our king, it is he who will. What will the Lord do? Save us. Where does salvation come from? It comes from Zion. Where does the law come from? It comes from Zion. Where does eternal life come from? Everything, even eternal life comes from Zion. Although people want to find the truth, they cannot find it no matter how much they stagger from sea to sea. Which place do we need to find? We need to find Zion. While people are going from church to church, hoping to find God, it will be blessed if they happen to find Zion. However, if they do not find Zion, all the efforts they have made their entire lives will be in vain. We must find Zion. Salvation is in Zion, and eternal life is in Zion too. 
Let's continue with verse 23. Your rigging hangs loose. The mast is not held secure. The sail is not spread. Then, an abundance of spoils will be divided, and even the lame will carry off plunder. No one living in Zion will say, I am ill, and the sins of those who dwell there will be forgiven. Where does there indicate? It indicates Zion. What do people who dwell in Zion receive? They will all receive the forgiveness of sins, which means they will be forgiven. The forgiveness of sins is given in Zion. Eternal life is granted in Zion. Salvation is bestowed in Zion, and the law of God is also proclaimed in Zion. Then, can people who do not know Zion talk about God's salvation? Can they talk about eternal life? Can they talk about the forgiveness of sins? No. They can never talk about these blessings. Where do all these blessings come from? They all come from Zion. According to verse 20, what is kept in Zion? The feast of God are kept in Zion. Then, shouldn't we find out which place keeps the feast of God? We must go to Zion to keep the feast and find God there because God dwells in Zion. Only when we go to Zion can we find the Spirit and the Bride. God who is the Spirit and God who is the Bride tell us to come to Zion. For this reason, Prophet Jeremiah said that we must quickly flee to Zion without delay. When we hear about Zion, we must flee without overthinking the situation. Let's see Jeremiah chapter 4, verse 5. Announce in Judah and proclaim in Jerusalem and say, Sound a trumpet throughout the land. Cry aloud and say, Gather together. Let us flee to the fortified cities. Which city should we flee to? Raise the signal to go to Zion. Flee for safety without delay. For I am bringing disaster from the north, even terrible destruction. For our safety, God told us to flee to Zion without delay. God established Zion because all the truths of the forgiveness of sins, eternal life, and salvation are given in Zion. It is because God dwells here right now. When we come into Zion, aren't we able to meet the Spirit and the Bride, who are God the Father and God the Mother? We can only meet God in Zion. Since Zion is a city of God's festivals, we need to learn about God's feast. Let's see Leviticus chapter 23, verse 1. The Lord said to Moses, Speak to the Israelites and say to them, These are, what are these? My appointed feast, the appointed feast of the Lord, which you are to proclaim as sacred assemblies. In verse 3 it says, There are six days when you may work, but the seventh day is a Sabbath of rest. Where is the weekly feast called the Sabbath day kept? It is kept in Zion, which the Bible testifies about. There are six days when you may work, but the seventh day is a Sabbath of rest, a day of sacred assembly. You are not to do any work wherever you live. It is a Sabbath to the Lord. Among God's feasts, there is a weekly feast called the Sabbath day. In order to keep the Sabbath day, where did God tell us to go? God said, go to Zion without delay. If anyone tells you about Zion and you are convinced that you have found Zion, do not hesitate, but enter that place quickly. This is God's message for us. Where have you come to? You have come to the World Mission Society Church of God. Isn't this the place where God's children, who revere Christ and Sang Hong and have faith in New Jerusalem Heavenly Mother, are gathered? The feast of the Sabbath day is kept here. Let's see what other feasts are kept here. We need to check whether or not God's feasts are kept in the World Mission Society Church of God. Many people are wandering around, trying to find the lost key in a totally irrelevant place, just like the man in the story. They are hoping to find what they have lost, but they are searching in the wrong place. Do you think they will ever find it? No matter how hard you search for your key in a big town square, Will you ever find it there? 
although you lost it at your house, you will never find it, even if you search for it all your life. This is the situation that applies to all contemporary religions. About 2,000 years ago, Jesus already foresaw this age, when many people would labor in vain, since they would follow the teachings taught by men. So, how did Jesus describe their worship to God? Didn't Jesus rebuke them and say, You are worshiping God in vain? Then, what about us who have come to Zion? We have been blessed by father and mother to receive the promise of the forgiveness of sins, eternal life, salvation, and the kingdom of heaven. We have also been blessed to have faith in the Spirit and the Bride, who are God the Father and God the Mother. Everyone, in the spiritual point of view, we are the people the angels envy the most. There are so many more amazing things in heaven. But there is one thing that angels envy on this earth. The Bible says that what they envy the most are the saints who are in the truth of the new covenant in Zion. Father and mother have granted us such a precious gift that even the angels long to look into. Therefore, we must keep this precious truth of the new covenant that we have received in Zion until the end. Is the Sabbath day the only feast of God? No, it is not. There is the weekly feast, and there are the annual feasts. For a weekly feast, there is the feast of the Sabbath day. Then, what about for the annual feast? Let's find out in verse 4. These are the Lord's appointed feasts, the sacred assemblies you are to proclaim at their appointed times. The Lord's Passover begins at twilight, on the 14th day of the first month. There is a feast called the Passover. It is kept at twilight on the 14th day of the first month by the sacred calendar. Let's continue to verse 6. On the 15th day of that month, the Lord's Feast of Unleavened Bread begins. We must find a church that observes the Feast of the Passover and the Feast of Unleavened Bread. It is because that church is Zion, which is prophesied in the Bible. We need to see if a church keeps the Sabbath day and the Passover. It should not be a church that just claims to have the Sabbath day and the Passover. However, shouldn't we check which Sabbath day that church keeps and whether or not they keep the Sabbath day and the Passover which God appointed according to the regulations of the New Covenant? In verse 7, it says, On the first day, hold a sacred assembly and do no regular work. Let's move on to verse 9. The Lord said to Moses, Speak to the Israelites and say to them, When you enter the land I am going to give you, and you reap his harvest, bring to the priest a sheaf of the first grain you harvest. He is to wave the sheaf before the Lord, so it will be accepted on your behalf. The priest is to wave it on the day after the Sabbath. What day is the day after the Sabbath? It is Sunday. This feast of the new covenant which is kept on Sunday, is called the Feast of First Fruits, because a sheaf of the first grain was offered. We can find the name of this feast, the Feast of First Fruits, in the Old Testament. Let us understand the meaning of this feast mentioned in Leviticus chapter 23. God said that the offering for the Feast of First Fruits must be presented on Sunday, which is the day after the Sabbath. That is why Jesus was raised from the dead on Sunday. His resurrection on Sunday is the fulfillment of the prophecy of the Feast of First Fruits. That is why God told them to wave the sheaf of the first grain on the day after the Sabbath. Let's go to verse 16. Count off 50 days up to the day after the seventh Sabbath, and then present an offering of new grain to the Lord. The feast that falls on the 50th day from the Feast of First Fruits is called the Day of Pentecost. What was this feast called in the Old Testament? It was called the Feast of Weeks. There are seven days in a week. Seven days times seven weeks plus one day, since it was celebrated on the day after the seventh Sabbath. Hence, this feast was kept on the 50th day. As God said, count off seven full weeks in verse 15. This feast is called the Feast of Weeks in the Old Testament. In the New Testament, 
It is called the day of Pentecost. Next, let's see the feast of the seventh month in Leviticus chapter 23, verse 23. The Lord said to Moses, Say to the Israelites, On the first day of the seventh month, you are to have a day of rest, a sacred assembly commemorated with trumpet blasts. There is a feast held on the first day of the seventh month by the sacred calendar. It is the Feast of Trumpets, a feast which was commemorated with trumpet blast. Now, let's see verse 26. The Lord said to Moses, The tenth day of the seventh month is the Day of Atonement. The Day of Atonement was held on the tenth day of the seventh month by the sacred calendar. It was a day when all the sins committed for the whole year were forgiven. Let's move on to verse 33. The Lord said to Moses, Say to the Israelites, On the fifteenth day of the seventh month, the Lord's Feast of Tabernacles begins. There is also a feast called the Feast of Tabernacles, kept on the fifteenth day of the seventh month by the sacred calendar. In Isaiah chapter 33, the place where these feasts are celebrated is called Zion. Among all the Christian churches around the world, which church keeps the Sabbath day, the Passover, in all the seven feasts, in three times, as the Feast of the New Covenant. It is the World Mission Society Church of God. Therefore, all mankind must stop staggering from sea to sea. They must go and find the place that is testified in the Bible. This is the only place where they can meet God and find the truth of the New Covenant. What place is this? It is Zion. Who dwells in Zion? God, who is our Mighty One, dwells there. Who is God that dwells there? God who dwells in Zion among us is God the Father and God the Mother. The Sabbath day, the seven feasts and three times, and all other decrees of the New Covenant are kept in this place. It is written, For there the Lord bestows His blessing, even life forevermore. God promised to give us the blessing of eternal life in Zion. Therefore, we must not seek eternal life from anywhere else. It is unreasonable to look for the key in an irrelevant place where it cannot be found. You need to look for the lost key where it can be found. We have all come into the precious garden of Zion, which father and mother have allowed us to enter. Then, we must fully obey all the decrees, regulations, and laws which God has proclaimed and taught us in Zion, hoping that all the children of Zion will always be joyful for the blessing of the forgiveness of sins, salvation, and eternal life. I'd like to conclude today's sermon. Thank you very much.